Let's begin today's discussion by asking what is a virtual source? What is effective SSD? How do you find it? What circumstances do you find this for? And then has field size and energy increase? What happens to the virtual source distance? So this is important and it is a good question for ABR part three because it's imperative in the commissioning of a linear accelerator and specifically electron beams. It's also something that unless you are doing commissioning, you probably aren't doing this regularly in your clinic. So it's good to brush up on and be sure you understand what is happening in this topic. So a virtual source is essentially the intersection point of back projections along the most probable directions of electron motion. So we don't want virtual SSD because the inverse square law is just not accurate with electrons because as the electrons interact with the jaws and other parts of the linear accelerator, those act as multiple sources. So that inverse square law relationship just does not exist with electrons. So this virtual source position is somewhat arbitrary, but it is that intersection point of the back projections. So let's jump to what is effective SSD. So this gives you the inverse square law for air gap between the applicator and the patient surface, which is critical in estimating dose and putting in your treatment planning system. So electrons, again, don't follow that inverse square law because they scatter from all the different linear accelerator materials. So this effective SSD can be used to find the output at other SSDs, which again is critical when you do extended SSD or you just do any type of electron plan where you don't have an SSD of typically 100. So how do you find it? So this is... First, you want to put your chamber at your Dmax, at the max, And so this is going to depend on the energy, of course. And then, so you want to put that Dmax in the material and then use air gaps. And then I'll put here air gaps and you want a range. So typically you can try from zero to 20 CM here. And then what you want to plot and let me see if I can draw a decent plot here. So on the y-axis, you are going to have the initial charge, Q0, divided by the charge at that gap, which is uh, just the G. And then down here, you are going to put the gap, and you can do that in centimeters, millimeters, whatever it may be. And what you're going to see is a somewhat or a very linear curve, hopefully. So your points would be like maybe here, here, here. So that is what you are going, going to see when you try to find your, your effective SSD. And so to find, you can't just simply do this. To actually find the effective SSD, you have to use the equation one divided by the slope that we just determined right here. And you want to or subtract D max. That is going to give you your effective SSD. So what circumstances do you find this for? So again, when you commission your linear accelerator, you have to do this for every energy, which should clue you into the fact that you need to do this for every energy, you also need to do this for every field size. Now for electrons, obviously we have cones. So you do it for the six by six, the 10 by six, the 10 by 10, the 15 by 15, 20 by 20, et cetera. So as field size and energy increase, what happens to the virtual source distance? So let's say we have an increased field size, our virtual source distance is also going to increase. And thankfully, similarly, as energy increases, our virtual source size is also going to increase. So you only have to remember if either of those circumstances happen, the virtual source distance is going to increase. So again, something we don't do very often in the clinic, but it's important to know, I think this is a, a pretty viable question on part three, something they could ask. So be sure you are familiar with it. 
there's more information in con, I believe in addicts and a lot of the other medical physics documents and books and resources. So review that. If you have any questions, please comment below. Thank you for watching and happy studying.